faith opens the door to blessing. Blessing opens the door to favor. The faith is such a cr- crucial and critical um, part of who we are as believers. The Bible says it is by grace through faith, by grace through faith that we're saved, by grace through faith. So it's through the door of faith that we receive the grace of God. But faith has to look like something. James, a book that Martin Luther wanted out of the canon. James is a pretty tough book. It's something we should read. You should read James because it gives some really good instructions. James actually says, faith without works is dead. So let's go. Let's go quickly to James chapter 2. All right, uh, verse 4. What is it, my brethren, if someone says, brethren? Jeez, hold on. This is New American Standard, too. What is it, my bros, if someone says he has faith but no works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothing and in need of daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and be filled, and yet you do not give them what is necessary for their body, what use is it? I mean, it's true. It's like... You know, I mean, unless you're going to, like, completely heal them. I have no money, but let me, bam, let me heal you, right? Paul and Silas. I have nothing. I don't have riches or or, uh, gold or silver, but what I have is way better than that. So you better either give them something really supernatural, or you better feed them. Or we look like uncaring Christians. No, they're Christians. Yeah, bless you. Yeah, well, I I need a meal. So James is saying, hey, listen, faith... And then works. So verse um, 17. Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead. Being by itself. But someone may well say, you have faith, I have works. Show me your faith without works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one. You do well. The demons also believe and shudder. But are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that faith without works is useless? It's like if you do anything without love, it's a clanging symbol. It's similar. You know, it's the same kind of concept. Verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up Isaac his son on the altar? You see that faith was working with his works... And as the result of the works, faith was perfected. What he's saying is, uh, Abraham didn't just have faith to believe God would either stop what he has instructed him to do or that he would raise him from the dead. Actually, the Bible, Hebrew says Abraham believed that, uh, that his son would be raised from the dead. So he, had, he put his, his faith into action. He said, well, I'm going to just obey. I'm going to go through with it because there is, because God's going to raise him up or it's not going to happen. But I have to, by faith, trust what God's saying. There was the work. Do you know what I'm saying? Got it? Okay. Thank you. Um, And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, And Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. That's a hard scripture. It's one of those tough ones. Um, In the same way, verse 25, was not Rahab the harlot or prostitute. That's what harlot means. Okay, in case you didn't know. Also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way. Verse 26, for just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. Dead man. Pretty powerful stuff here. Don't get crazy with it. It's the grace of God that saves you. But if you want to have active faith, you got to have some works. You want to see things done, you you got to co-labor with God. The woman with the issue of blood, 12 years, she saw many, 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 many doctors. Um, I have a friend, Jamie Montera. He, he preached here. I have that one hair again, guys. That's annoying. It's annoying me. 
Jamie Montero, my evangelist friend, he's preached here before. You remember Jamie? Um, when he was studying this, um, this story of the woman with the issue of blood, he thought, man, tw- was it 12 years, right? 12 years is a long time to have a menstrual cycle. That's a long time. I mean, from a husband's perspective, I mean, like, what was her poor husband doing for 12 years? Like, vacations, if she was married. So my buddy called a doctor friend of his. He said, what would it look like if a woman had a 12-year menstrual cycle? Like, nonstop. And he said, she would be a shell of a woman. That's what he said. So understand that when you read that story. This was a very fragile, frail woman. She had to be. She had seen doctor after doctor after doctor. I'm sure her friends had told her all kinds of things to do. Da, da, da. Nothing worked. She heard that the Messiah, the healer, was in town. And what did she do? She put her faith into action. Had she not gone and pushed through the crowd, she would not have been healed. Her faith put into works, pulled on heaven, and heaven responded. Sometimes we sit around, we have these prayers, God help me do this, do this, do this, and God says, I have given you strategies. Go do it. One time I was complaining to God many, many years ago, I was complaining to God, God, I'm so poor. Why am I poor? I want money. And he, he's so good to me. He just listens. You know, and then he's just like, are you done? I'm like, yes, I'm done. And you know what he said to me? He said, I have given you so many gifts. I have told you, I've given you strategy, and you have not done one thing I've told you to do. And when you do those things, there will be finances attached. I'm like, oh, faith. Now put it into action. Faith without action is dead. It's a pretty, it's pretty big deal. Passive faith is powerless faith. Passive Christianity is powerless Christianity. Has God not given us authority over sickness? He has. I mean, I can't get around it. I cannot theologically, doctrinally find in here where we are under sickness. I can't. As hard as I would try, which I wouldn't, but I can't. And so why then when I get sick, I say I as in we, why would the first thing I do would be to bow to sickness? Shouldn't it be, wait a minute. I have authority over this thing. I cannot also find in here anywhere where it says poverty is a gift of the Spirit. I can't. In fact, I find the opposite. So why is it that we bow to a spirit of poverty when we are above the world? The kingdom sits above the the world's government, and we're in the kingdom. There's no condemnation here. I mean, I'm, I'm preaching to myself, too. Like, the Lord told me one time when I, I had seasonal allergies. I still I don't have them as bad. Um, and I was just kind of like, ah, seasonal allergies, blah, you know, blah, blah. And then and the Holy Spirit was quick, quick in me. He's like, why do you accept seasonal allergies? But, like, but, you'll, but if it's something more serious, you'll be like, we're sta- I'm standing up against this, and I have the authority over this. But for certain sicknesses, you're just like, ah, it is what it is, what it is. It's just life. I mean, that's what the Holy Spirit was like. Why would you do that? And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do that. Now, I, do I still have seasonal allergies sometimes? Yeah. Look, I have not arrived yet. It, just ask my family. I am not perfect. I have not arrived yet, but I am striving to look like this. To how we're supposed to look, that's what I'm striving for. This story of, the, of um, Rahab is wild. Rahab the harlot. Uh, Rahab the prostitute. I mean, that's what harlots is a little less, you know, offensive because we don't really say harlot, you know, now. We say prostitute. 
But think about us who she was. Um, so the story is in, is in Joshua. And it's funny because she's listed as having faith, in, like as a woman of faith. We don't even know if she was, uh, she was a Canaanite. We don't even like know if she turned to be, you know, to, to receive Yahweh, to receive God. But her faith got her, like literally saved her life and her family and her friends. And so the story, it's in, it's in uh, Judges. Is, what, oh my gosh, what is it? Judges. Somebody look it up here. I didn't write it down. Is it two? Oh, it's not two. What, 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 what's, guys, this is horrible. I'm your pastor. I, didn't, I don't know where it is. Oh, is it Joshua? Joshua 2, okay, not Judges, okay, Joshua. Joshua. Did I say Joshua at first? Okay, I, I switched, okay. All right, so this story is in Joshua. It's actually kind of intertwined through a few chapters. So Joshua sends the, you know, the, the, the two spies over. You know the story, but I'll just recap it to uh, Jericho. And um, the Bible says that they immediately enter the house. They, they go into Jericho and they enter the house of the prostitute. Now, I think that's because that would be an easy, uh, she welcomed all kinds of men. It, would be un, it wouldn't be suspicious. And they just went in. Um, I read some commentary about they went in either, either for uh, safety or sex. I'm like, no, dude. Dude. No. Like. So anyway, they went in. And, 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 and they were hiding, basically. And, and they were supposed to kind of check out the land. Anyway, it got word back to the king um, that two spies had come, and they were in, in the prostitute's house. Everyone knew this lady. She was probably one of the, pro you know. So the soldiers went, you know, they went to her house, and they're like, hey, uh, we hear you have a couple dudes here. Uh, they're not here for bong. They're here as spies. So uh, where are they? She had hid them on the roof. And so they, she said, they ran. They left. And so these soldiers just took her word for it. So they ran off. They left the city gates. The Bible says this, the gates of the city closed on them, and they went off searching for the two spies. They didn't find them, obviously, because they were on the roof. Now, here's what's cool. Um, Rahab was like, hey, look, we have heard about your God and the mighty things that he has done, and we are terrified of what's going to happen. If, if, like, if you get word, if you go back and get word about how you can take this city, we're, we're terrified. And so she said, look, please, because what I did for you, Will you spare me and my family? And they said, I mean, long story short, they said, we will spare you because of, the, because of your kindness. But I want you to notice something that's really cool, is that they gave her specific instructions. This is called, it's verse 15, the promise of Rahab. Then she uh, let them down by a rope through the window. This is after they made their agreement. For her house was on the city wall so that she was living on the wall. She was on, like, that's her house. On the wall. Okay. And so she said to them, go up to the hill country so that the pursuers will not happen upon you and hide yourselves there for three days until the pursuers return. Then afterward, you may go on your way. The men said to her, we shall be free from this oath to which you have made us swear unless, so they're saying, listen, unless you do this, we're not going to, you're not going to be saved. And they told her, when we come into the land, you tie this cord of scarlet thread in the window which you let us down and gather yourselves into the house of your fathers and all your people, and you will be saved. Scarlet thread. The scarlet represents the blood of Christ. Listen, you put out this blood, this scarlet thing. We will recognize it, and you will be saved. It's a picture of the blood of Jesus. 
the scarlet blood of Christ. So she did that. You know the story. They came six days. They walked around Jericho one time. On the seventh day, they did seven times. And then Joshua said, shout, for God has given us the city. And the Bible says the walls crumbled. But listen, there was one part of the city that must have stayed up, standing tall in the midst of the war and the destruction. And it was that wall, part of the wall, where she was living with all of her relatives and her family because that scarlet thread was still dangling. The blood of Christ was still dangling there. And in the midst of all of the defeat of the enemies stood one portion of the wall. Why? Because her faith saved her. Guys, it's time to walk in the power of God. If God says it, you go do it. If he says don't, then don't. We talked about this last week. I'm going to read it again. Psalm 103. These are the benefits of sons and daughters. These are the blessings of God. Remember, faith leads to blessing. Faith leads to blessing. And I love how Psalms 103 starts. It starts with us blessing God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Remember that old, that old hymn, that old song? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits. And then they're, they're listed. Who pardons all your iniquities. Guys, you are no longer bound in sin. You've been pardoned. You receive him. You are new. Old man's dead. New man is, has been raised to life as Christ was raised from the dead. You are raised from the dead. The Bible says we died with Christ and we raised with Christ. And does that mean we don't sin? That doesn't mean that. That means we are no longer bound by sin and we are not sinners. Some of us... Sin more than others. Work on that. If that's you, you need to work on that. And actually, to be honest with you, sin should not be an issue. We shouldn't have sin issues, if I'm being completely honest. Like, it, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, like, you shouldn't be graveling with something. Like, oh, this thing, you know, like, you should, you're, you're, you're more than a conqueror. You are, you have conquered. Listen, the Lord has conquered everything at the cross. That includes your pornography. He conquered it. You don't have to go back to it. You just don't have to. Well, I'm lured to it. Well, stop. Stop being lured to it. You know why you're lured, you're lured to it? Because it's in your heart. Actually, Paul says, I'm tempted by the things that are in my heart. And so, cut it out of your heart. I'm just using pornography as an example, for instance. Whatever it is, you, we should not be dealing with habitual sin issues. We're free, guys. We're free. Because we put our faith into action. We're free. Uh, here, freedom into action would be like this. Uh, you're a slave, and all of a sudden, you're in jail, and the prison doors open, and you go, I'm not going out. Well, but you're free. Well, yeah, but I'm going to stay here. Well, you need to put your freedom into action. You need to actually walk out of the prison cell. So we got to put our faith into action, right? So... Uh, pardons all your iniquities. Stop thinking like a sinner. Start thinking like a son or a daughter of God. I love the, the next one who uh, uh, heals all of your diseases. We talked about last week. That is all of your diseases. He heals all of your diseases. The Greek, um, actually it wouldn't be Greek. The Hebrew there is all, means all. All, everything. All of them. All your diseases, they're healed. They were healed. Look at Isaiah. They're already healed. And, um, and here's what's funny. This is pre the death of Christ. This is before, this is old covenant. He healed all your diseases. Imagine how much more greater it is in the new covenant. When he literally came and kicked the devil in the mouth. 
This is like we're in, we live in a greater covenant than Psalms. Do you understand when you can read the Psalms? It's how, how great it is. You, you live in a greater covenant. So every promise in here is like double for you. Heals all your uh, diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit. Yeah, I love this. I meet some Christians that are, they're, they love the Lord. They're saved. They're, everything is wonderful. And they're still, they're still fighting for their salvation. Like, no, dude, you're, you're in. You're in, dude. Like, we're not talking about, I'm not talking about faith plus works equals salvation. Okay, I'm talking about faith plus works equal actually powerful Christianity. Okay, so look, if you're in, you're in. Now don't, you know, now look, we have to, we live righteous lives. You, you know, like there are, there are things like we don't do as Christians. There are movies I won't watch. I'm not trying to get legalistic. I'm just saying everybody has their own kind of, you know, conviction, right? There are certain things I'm not going to watch. I'm going to, like, for instance, I'm not going to watch any, a movie if it's full of sex. Just not going to do it. Why would I? Why? I don't understand why. I don't, personally, I don't understand why men do this, Christian men. Well, you know, it's got a great story. <laughs> it's a great story. And in fact, because people know how I am, they'll have Christians, men, like ministers, men of God that I respect that I go like, oh, did you see uh, Game of Thrones or whatever? That was big. I'm like, you watch that? Or, oh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's got some sex. Got some sex. It's like softcore porn. <laughs> like, well, yeah, maybe you shouldn't watch it. You probably shouldn't watch it. But yeah, the story's great. Look, look and I'm not, con I'm not condemning them. I'm not judging them. I'm just like, dude, I'm really shocked that you allow that into your house and into your brain. So, again, pick, pick your stuff. But, like, don't be dumb. Like, don't allow stuff into your, into your heart. You know, so um, anyway, you're, you're like, you've been redeemed from the pit. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Lee, come on up. Like, you're in. Man, you're in the kingdom. You're good. Don't worry about it. God's not dangling you over hell, waiting for you to make a mistake so he can drop you. No, no, no. He's doing the opposite. He's like, man, how can I bless them more? How can I bless them more? Hebrews uh, is, has this really cool verse. Have great verses. I love this. Yeah, it's, it's Hebrews uh, eleven six, but it's the second half. We know the first half. Without faith, it's impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is. And this is the second part of the verse. And that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. He is a rewarder. You want more blessing? Continue to seek him. Amen. It's true. God blesses all his kids, but I'm telling you, they're not, they're not all leveled equally. They're not all distributed equally. It's just true. God loves everybody equally. But there are certain people that favor on their life. Why? Because they diligently seek Him. So you can live, listen, you can, you can leave here and live a normal, boring, powerless Christian life and be totally happy and die and go to heaven and it's going to be great. But listen, these promises, these promises are not for on the other side of eternity. They're for this side of eternity. The promises of God are for, for this side. Now I want to walk in the promises of God. So I declare, I'm going to put my faith into action and I'm going to just say, God, if you said to do it, I'm going to do it. Amen. Come on. If you could stand, that'd be great. And God is opening up doors all around, all, all, all over the place for his people. Man, next week, I'm, I'm going to be, I don't use the announcements, but I'm out of town next week. I'm opening uh, Gershom's 1,200-seat auditorium. Actually, John and I will be gone. And, um, man, I get to lead worship for Stevie Wonder. I think that's pretty cool. My band's going to be Justin Bieber's recording band. That's pretty cool. That's a cool door, Tony. I believe it's because I've been faithful to God, and he's opening up doors for me. And he will do the same for you. He will do the same for you. Amen.